Hi, want to learn how to build muscle, lose weight, get stronger? Stay tuned through the video. This is probably going to be one of my most informative videos yet. At least I'm going to try to. Yeah. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Rapping from Rapping Time Fitness. Before we hit this little roll real quick, I want you to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, we're going to talk a little fitness talk since I got somewhere to go. I'm pointing it at the road instead of pointing at myself. For safety reasons, I tend to look at the camera when I'm pointing at myself. So, hopefully that's understandable. So, bear with me. We're going to get into how I'm losing weight or how I lost weight. I lost 40 pounds this year. Um, I'll be 38 in August, so almost 40, lows and 40. Uh, 40 years old, with a, 38 years old with a six pack. You know what I'm saying? Not even bragging, because anybody, if you follow the tips, anybody can do it, man. Um, of course, I'm using, you know, the basics, the fundamentals. Too many people run away from the bread and butter. And they not literally bread and butter. I'm saying you can have your bread and butter on my program, but I'm just saying like people run away from the fundamentals. Just look at it like a basketball game, all right? If a basketball team played without the fundamentals, it was all flash. You think they'll win? You think they got a chance at the championship or even to get into the playoffs or anything? No, they're not going nowhere. If they all about nothing but flash, you can throw some flash in there. Same thing with your diet. If you don't know your maintenance calories, you're lost. You're lost, I'm telling you. I don't care what kind of diet you want. I don't care. People can argue with me all they want, man. At the end of the day, I'm going to just give you the real. Because people will say, uh, and I'll be like, dog. At the end of the day, a lot of these diets that work, you're cutting your calories without even knowing it. Keto. You're cutting out a whole food group, carbs, right? Yeah, but I eat more fats and protein. But at the end of the day, most people that I've seen, they don't they don't up their fats and protein. They, I mean, of course, they have more fats. They up their fats. But a lot of them don't even have moderate protein. A lot of people don't even know how much protein they need per day. If you're eating under your maintenance calories, you're going to lose weight on a consistent basis, right? Slam on my brakes real quick because they're trying to ride my butt. You're not going to control my speed. It was a 45 and I was going 52. I ain't about to go 60 for you. Go around. It's another lane. It wasn't even them. That, that car went around first. That one was way. This one is coming up right here gonna ride my butt like get off my butt i slow down i brake check it real quick that will control my speed if i want to go fast i go fast if i want to go slow i go slow i ain't even going slow i was going 52 on the 45 so i'm seven miles over the limit i'm cruising i'm, I'm gonna drive comfortably to, to the liking of my driver you know what i'm saying it ain't my fault if you in a rush to get somewhere should have left early it ain't my fault you're not that's a pro tip, man. That ain't got nothing to do with fitness, man. It really does because, you know, being safe on the road, don't let nobody else control your drive. When I first started driving, I used to let people control that until I realized, what am I doing? You know what I'm saying? When I first started driving, man, people get behind me like that, I'll speed up for them. And, no, don't do that because you'll be speeding with them. You end up getting a ticket. <laughs> you end up getting a ticket messing with somebody that you know what I'm saying? Nah. Um, sipping on my Monster Rain or whatever. I don't know if it's a Monster it's a Rain energy drink. I used to, I used to do bang, but they didn't have it at CVS. At the CVS, I would too. But uh, also that brings me to what I was about to say, man. Too many, too many people. I'm just naming some mistakes. And I ain't talking about nothing because at the end of the day, I used to do these same mistakes. So don't get offended when I name a mistake that you might be making.
Nikki. I'm speaking from experience. I ain't getting that red light, dog. But um, speaking from experience, man, count all of your calories. When you drink something, it counts. Don't say, oh, I drank it. I, I've heard people say, I drank it. I didn't eat it. Your drinks count. Your sauces count. Oil in your food, all of that, if it goes in your body, it counts. All right? Every single thing that go in your body counts. Everything. I ain't saying you just got to be crazy about counting your calories. I'm just saying at least get in the ballpark. You know what I'm saying? Find out what your maintenance calories is. Find out how many calories. Like me, for instance, my maintenance calories is like 26, 2700. I'm eating 2,200 calories a day. You know what I'm saying? So that's like four or 500 calories deficit. See what I'm saying? If I didn't know my maintenance calories, I wouldn't know how many calories would be a deficit. You know what I'm saying? I could be eating too little. I could be eating too much. A lot of people that that's, that's on a diet right now, if your weight is just at a steady, you might want to cut two, cut like 200 calories off of what you're eating every day. If you don't count your calories, my advice would be to, most of us are creatures of habit. Most of us tend to do roughly the same thing every day, even without noticing. So go in your head, or even if you have to write it down, go through a typical day for you when it comes to eating. What did you eat in the morning? What did you eat in the... Of course, you might not know the portion sizes if you don't measure your food. But you should be able to you know, kind of get in the ballpark. What did I eat before bed? All, all, go throughout a typical day for you. Write the things down. Find out how many calories in each one of them things. Add it up. That should be... That's not a good way of finding your maintenance, but that's an easy way. I can help you find your maintenance if you hit me up, but at the same time, that's an easy way for a beginner to get within the ballpark. Because if you've been eating roughly the same amount of food every day, and you've been weighing roughly the same amount of weight every day, that's your maintenance, or roughly, right? Right. A lot of uh, professionals argue with me a lot about that, but at the end of the day, I help so many people with just that advice, you know? Take that amount of calories, cut it by 200. Get on a scale every day. I'm just giving a beginner. This is not a this is not a professional way of doing things. This is just a cookie cutter kind of way. I'm gonna tell you that. But for those who don't really wanna, you know, get into the nitty gritty of what it really takes, you see my whiteboard video yesterday. So at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about. For those who don't wanna get to crunch the numbers like that okay now do that take a few calories 200 calories ain't much cut down 200 calories weigh yourself every day if in a week you don't lose a pound or two cut another 100 150 calories you will lose weight but you have to make sure you really are consistent I you can't eat, okay, let's say you find out your number was 2,200, like mine, whatever. I'm just throwing that in there because it's mine. I cannot have, okay, I ate 2,200 today, uh, tomorrow I eat 2,200, the next day I eat 2,800, and then I just start falling off, and then I, then I, oh, this don't work. You know, no, I need to be consistent. You know what I'm saying? Now, if I slip up, if I do 2200, right? If I slip up and I'm still under my maintenance, it's not a big deal. Okay, my maintenance is 26, 2700. If I slip up and eat 2600, not a big deal. You know what I'm saying? I just can't, I can't do it on a regular basis. Now, main gaining, gain taining, body recomp, yes, I can. If you, if you, Throw in that factor. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna get to that in a minute. Because that's what I'm about to start doing after I get done cutting. Um yeah. I can do that. 
it helped me out of the gym. Those calories would make me push my weights a little farther. But I want to get done with this cut. I want to get, I'm almost done. I'm like right there. You know what I'm saying? Watch my next physique update. I'm right there. Y'all see my last physique update? I look twice better than that right now. Come on, man. Get out my way, young Reese. I look twice better than that right now. It ain't never over. You know what I'm saying? See my physique update at the end last year? At the end of my, um, at the end of the, um, summer cutting or whatever? I look better than that. I look better than I did last year at the end of my cut. Not bragging, I'm just saying. It works. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I had somebody, I had a dude tell me that my diet's only work because I work out. And he it won't work for him because he don't work out. No man. Calories in versus calories out is not something I made up. That's something that works for everybody. There's not a person on this earth that, that it wouldn't work for. People that's tried it and it failed, they didn't know how many calories they needed. Two thousand calories ain't universal for everybody. That's that's cookie cutter. You know what I'm saying? Everybody should be eating 2,000 calories. So you're saying that Shaquille O'Neal should be eating the same calories as, as who's somebody small? Name somebody small. I don't, off the top of my head, I don't know. I don't want to offend nobody either. But you're saying they should eat the same amount of calories to maintain? No. You're crazy. you crazy. And then somebody that's active, let's say somebody that's not even as big as um, Shaquille O'Neal, but they're active. LeBron James is still in the game. Shaq still for work out, whatever. I'm not a fan of Shaq. I don't really like Shaq no more. But I'm just naming him because he's big. LeBron James, for his position, he's big. Not as big as Shaq, nowhere near. But he's in the game. He's very active. Well, they out of the game now. But I'm just saying, when they, when it's season time. You know what I'm saying? And of course, you got to keep training. So he work out. Get how much he weigh, but he weigh way more than me. I guarantee you his calories needs to be way higher than mine. I'm stronger than LeBron James. I'm more muscular than LeBron James, but he probably work more well. Shoot, I don't know. I do 12 and a half hour shifts, man. Physical labor. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, I mean, that's an NBA player, bro. That's an athlete. That's a professional athlete. Their calories are going to be way more than yours. Do not think that man is just eating 2,000 calories. For real. At the end of the day, that's another thing I be trying to tell people that's beginners. Like, no disrespect. This is what I had to tell myself as a beginner when I was a beginner. No disrespect, I'm telling you what I told myself, but this is this can help you out too. When you're a beginner at anything, you need to realize that you are a beginner. You are a blank slate. You are a blank slate. Yo, I told myself, I ain't telling you this, I, this is what I told myself. I, I told myself that I needed to be more ears than mouth when it came to learning like I ask a question and I listen you know what I'm saying like straight up I had to tell myself that I did not know anything because at first I wasted a couple of years when I first first started but when I restarted right that's when I started listening when I first started nobody could tell me nothing I had this guy I was a job where he worked at job where I was going to job for this is a uh, years ago right so this guy he was like a, a amateur bodybuilder he was the perfect person for me to be listening to you might say oh he wasn't a professional bodybuilder so what he still was better than 99 percent of the population you know what i'm saying so he was the perfect person for me to listen to when it came to building some muscle losing some weight I didn't understand nothing. I thought I knew everything. He was reaching out to me to tell 
tell me some stuff. I wasn't asking him. He was reaching out to me. Right? I wouldn't listen. So I wasted years. And now that I get it, and I've been getting it for a, a good bit now, I look back and I think, like I was thinking the other day, yo, half of the stuff that I do and half of the stuff, my methods, are really similar to his methods, what he was doing, what he was trying to tell me. I was like, wow, if I would have listened back then, bruh, who knows? But of course he was a bodybuilder, of course he was on PEDs and needles, but that don't, that don't mean the information ain't there, because I'm natty for life. And at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? At my best, when it comes to lifting, at my best, 365 bench, uh, 545 deadlift, 455 squat. I'm nowhere near any of them numbers right as of now, especially the squat. My squat then and my squat now is a night and day difference. You know, I see the blinks of the lights when it comes to my deadlift. And pound for pound, my bench press is just as good. But uh, because I was 230 when I did that bench press, right now I'm 170. So do the math, I'm 60 pounds lighter. So, you know what I'm saying? Mass moves mass. For people that don't understand lifting, mass moves mass. So, that doesn't mean that, okay, because you're 230, that don't mean you should be able to go in the gym and, and do 365 or nothing like that. I'm just saying, like, you need to practice. You need to experience. Don't just get in there. That's another thing. As a beginner, you need to understand you are a beginner. Don't go in there trying to lift the weights that people that been in there doing. Even if you're strong enough to do it. But I've seen some beginners that's already pretty strong. You know what I'm saying? They just got that, that, that natural strength. You know what I'm saying? But, even if you got that, you do not have the... Um, hands on the spirits, your form isn't going to be down packed, you haven't practiced, you know what I'm saying, you haven't practiced, that's too much weight for you, even if you can pick it up, just because you can pick it up don't mean it ain't too much weight for you, can you pick it up right, can you pick it up correctly, if the answer is no, you shouldn't be doing it, not yet. Light the way, swallow your pride. Stop ego lifting. You know what I'm saying? I, I get to the point where I ego lift sometimes. You know, that's something we do. That's what guys do. It's part of the game. But it's a time and a place for it. I mean, you really shouldn't. But when you start getting real strong, it's, it's hard not to. You know what I'm saying? You shouldn't have to prove nothing to nobody. But then at the day, sometimes you feel a need. You know what I'm saying? be in the gym talking and they be in there talking crap or or, or, or having their imaginary little uh, competitions with you. They might be doing the same lift as you and they looking over and they, you know what I'm saying? Like, dude, I'm not, I'm not competing with you. I'm here working out. But sometimes you get to that point where you just get tired of them and you just gotta put them in their place. You know what I'm saying? I used to do it all the time. But now, as I get older and wiser, as I done seen people hurt themselves, I've never been like injured, but I've been spraying here and there, a little bang, a little. That comes with the game, even if you are doing things right. But uh, I learned my lesson from ego lifting, mostly from watching other people. You know, a smart man learns from his mistakes. A wise man learns from not only his mistakes, but other people's mistakes. You know what I'm saying? If I if I walk into them trees right there and I see you get ate up by a dang wolf or something, I ain't going over there. You know what I'm saying? Somebody else, man, it ate him, but it might not eat me. Dog, that's stupid, man. <laughs> but yeah, man, I'm tired, man. Y'all can probably tell in my voice that, you know, I just did, uh, 12 hours at my job, 12 and a half hours. Bro, 
of physical work, you know what I'm saying? Earlier this morning, on top of that, earlier this morning, my last video, I did that squat day, two o'clock in the morning. So yeah, I be going in, I mean, so yeah, my calorie amount, even when cutting, might be way more than yours might be. Even though 2,020, well, 2,200 calories don't sound like a lot, but you gotta key in the fact that I'm only 170 right now, and my body fat percentage is very low. To get your abs and to get cut and to get lean, a lot of guys, that's another thing I wanna touch on, is a lot of guys think 200 pounds is a magical number. Everybody got this goal of having abs at 200 pounds. Let me bust your bubble real quick. You're not gonna have abs at 200 pounds. I got abs, I'm six feet tall, give or take an inch. I'm 170. And if I have more muscle than you, how do you think that, how do you equate that you're gonna weigh 200 pounds, all muscle? When somebody says all muscle, that means you're lean, that means you're ripped. That means you don't have a lot of body fat on you. How do you think you're gonna get there? Cause I used to think that. I'm hey, I can't I can't I can't I can't insult you at the end of the day. Huh? What kind of words am I using? I don't know. I just gotta work, I'm tired. But I can't talk bad about you at the end of the day for, for thinking that you're gonna be 200 pounds off muscle. Cause I thought I was gonna be over 200 pounds off muscle. Until you start cutting and get serious about it, and you start seeing your cuts, you're gonna you're gonna realize like, yo, I got a lot. Most guys got 50 or 60 pounds to lose, even if they're not even very overweight. Trust me, I just lost 40 this year, and I wasn't that much overweight. I was only at what two two ten. At the most, 78, right? Yeah, it was 210. At the end of my bulk, the heaviest I was, was like 209 or something like that. So I lost like 39 pounds. You know, round that up, 40, you know what I'm saying? But I, I wanna get a little bit more lean. Even though, I think if I'm not single digit body fat percentage, I ain't far from it. But I want to lock in that single digit body fat percentage this year, man. Why? I'm not doing a competition or nothing like that. Da -da -da. A lot of people try to say it's detrimental to my gains. Yeah and no. I will argue no. I will argue yes because no matter how careful you cut, because I'm cutting carefully to not lose any muscle, but no matter how carefully you cut, you're going to lose some muscle. But you're gonna look way more muscular because you won't have any fat. Your cuts are gonna show. You're gonna be able to see your abs. You're gonna be able to see separation between your bicep and your tricep. You're gonna have a horseshoe on the back of your tricep. Your your uh, your back is gonna be cut up. Everything's gonna be cut up. That's why they call it cutting. You know what I'm saying? A lot of guys scared to cut because they're scared to lose size, or they're scared to lose muscle, or they're scared to lose the amount of weight they can lift in the gym. My thing is this, all right? If your goal is this and somebody else's goal is that, don't get all butt hurt because somebody else's goal is different than yours. I lose 40 pounds, right? When I first started losing weight, when I first started my cut, people, yeah, you should do it and this and that. And the third, the same people right now, why did you do that? That doesn't make sense. Da -da -da. Like, dude, you're just standing still. You're not even working out. You're not even dieting. You're not even doing anything. So, to be the main people that always got something to say about what you're doing. I'm going to tell you that, man. Before you start your journey, that, this is some advice for beginners, man. Before you, you start your journey, if you're serious about it, if you start making progress. If, you, if you're serious about it, you're going to make progress. There's no way you're not gonna make progress. I don't care if you got bad genetics. I don't care if you barely soak in any of the knowledge, whether I'm giving or who giving. If you're serious and you're doing more than what you're doing now, you're gonna make progress, you know?
course, those things I just named is gonna um, your genetics and your hard work and your, your knowledge and all that. That's going to tell you how much you're going to progress. But you're going to progress. You're not going to go from you know how I used to be, just sitting on the couch playing video games, eating and drinking whatever I want, to hitting the gym. I barely had any knowledge when I first started hitting the gym. But guess what? I seen progress. You know, your first two years, you're going to get those newbie gains anyways. But you're going to see progress because you're going, you're going to go from doing nothing to doing something. You know what I'm saying? You're going to go from doing nothing to doing something. Change up your diet even the slightest bit going to see progress if it's the slightest bit in the right direction you don't have to be perfect man that's another piece of advice that i want to give you and uh i procrastinated like okay i've been on this channel just, just like uh this is fitness but i'm gonna talk about my youtube for a little minute which is also fitness related my name is rapid time fitness um nice to meet you but uh <laughs> what i'm trying to say is I procrastinate. I had my name and everything five years before I even started my channel. Because I thought that I had to be perfect. I wanted to be a certain size. I wanted to be able to lift a certain amount of weight. So, my mistakes was it cost me a lot. Because at my prime that I'm working my way back up to, I didn't have it on camera. My 545 deadlift was not on camera because I wanted six before I started shooting my deadlifts. My 365 bench press, I got it on camera, but the first time I did it, when I did it even a, in even better form with a pause rep, da da da, when it was even better, my 365 bench press wasn't even on camera because I wanted 400 which I never even got to yet neither 600 on the deadlift 455 squat didn't catch it on camera I don't even think I got anything in the fours on camera I think the heaviest squat I got I don't even think I got 405 on camera I think I got like late threes on camera in my earlier videos. But I wanted more. My best physique wasn't even on camera. My transformation video, probably the best physique that I got on camera. My best physique wasn't even on camera because I wanted to be like stage ready, bodybuilder type leanness before I started my channel. Because I thought that I had to be the best of the best of the best. Well, I should have just started. Right? What's my point? My point is just start, man. My point is just start. I guess this video is probably going to be called Take a Ride With Me, Advice for Beginners, or Just Start. I'm kind of like debating, but I got more for you. You know, just start. But when you start, understand you are a beginner. You do not have to go all out on your workouts as a beginner. As a beginner, you need to be learning how to actually perform the workout correctly. And as you get more and more comfortable with your, your form, then start adding weight. People used to laugh at me, man. When I first started the deadlift, the deadlift was my best lift. But no, no, the bench and the deadlift. Squat third. But, uh, and I'm, I'm talking like a power lifter. That's what they do. Bench, squat, deadlift. So, you know what I'm saying? Um, in my opinion, I'm the only lift that you need to really go super duper heavy on anyways. You know what I mean? A lot of other things like curls and stuff like that going to injure yourself. A lot of people doing those strict bar curls and they're maxing and seeing how much they can do. You should not be maxing on the curl. I don't care. Don't just do everything you see everybody do, man. But, uh, 
we learned that as kids, man. Hey, hey, with that fire, you might get burnt. You know what I'm saying? But what was I saying? People laughed at me when I first started my deadlift. Because when I first started deadlifting, I was always scared to deadlift. When I first started seeing people, I didn't know what a deadlift was. I was like, what the heck is that? Like, you're going to hurt your back and you're going to tear yourself. I see people's veins popping out. And, you know, I'm like, dang, that look crazy, but that don't look safe. And then they started talking to me about form and all that. So I started looking it up, started reading, started learning how to actually do it. Then I started with some lightweight, baby weight, 135 pounds. Would have started lower than that if we had bumper plates at the gym I had, but we didn't. But um, people walk past me, that's all you got, laughing. You know what I'm saying? Especially the guys that was deadlifting way more. They are deadlifting like three, 400. I thought that was, I thought 300 was crazy. That's how much I did not know about deadlifting. 300 ain't nothing on a deadlift, right? So, mm. they laughing at me. I'm working on my form. That's why I'm lifting so light. They laughing. Same thing I'm doing on the squat now. I'm do, I was doing that on the deadlift. They laughing at me, laughing at me, laughing at me. I'm doing it on the deadlift too, but I'm more comfortable with my deadlift. So I'm actually deadlifting my fours right now. I'm working my way back to my fives. Safety. A lot of people don't understand that. Hey, what do you mean by safety? By not hurting myself. <laughs> that stuff ain't safe. You do it wrong. You know, if you don't live there, you don't you don't have the hands-on experience of how it feels. So, but I get to the point where I'm um, I did left a little bit more, two twenty-five, three, whatever. By the time I got to my threes and fours, all the people that was laughing at me wasn't deadlifting anymore. What happened? They didn't deadlift anymore. Some of them didn't lift at all anymore. You guess they got hurt? You guess right. The majority of them end up getting hurt. Tearing up their back, bicep tears. Bicep tears on the deadlift. If you didn't know you could tear your bicep on a deadlift, you don't even know what a deadlift is. You know what I'm saying? No insults, but I'm just saying. A lot of people be trying to tell me that's just for the haters. I shouldn't address the haters. Because there's more people that, that rock with me than our haters. So, you know, we at Lowe's. I didn't want to drive to where I was going because I don't drive to my house on camera. So I ain't driving to nobody else's house on camera. So, uh, I guess that'd be the end of the video so far. I got so much more, but I'm tired. Y'all can hear it in my voice. Come like, subscribe, share, how